Hello, my name is Abdel Rahim. I'm a senior software engineer at CodeThink. I'm also a GNOMOS maintainer. So in this work, I was kind of work wearing two hats. And we have... Hello, my name is um, Chibuza Judah Yenegecha. I am a project manager at CodeThink. I've been at CodeThink for close to 11 years now, um, mostly on automotive projects. Please don't boo. <laughs> Well, I'm mostly working with teams who work on IVI systems, you know, updates, upgrades to the kernel, the middleware components, and all those sort of things. And, well, working for CodeThink, invariably that means doubling into the free open source software and open source world. Hence, I'm here uh, to support Abdurrahim on this talk. So, the talk we're going to give today is about the GNOME OS, what we did for GNOME OS, uh, which was a project that was funded by STF in conjunction with CodeThink. So it was part funded by CodeThink and STF. The general goal of the project that we did for the GNOME Foundation was to improve the general goal of making GNOME OS Nightly a viable daily driver for QA. Um, I will ask a quick question here. How many people do we have here who use GNOME OS? Just show by raise of hand. Only you, Valentin. Okay. And Leonard. That's good. <laughs> Only two people. No, he says he's tested it. Oh, he's tested it. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's good then. So, the project that uh, the GNOME Foundation contracted CoThing to do was in different shapes. We had a part of the project on OpenQA, a part of it was also on CSS Utils, and the major part of it was on what we're going to talk about today, which is the system DCS update. The inspiration for the system thesis update was mostly from um, Leonard's view on how to put together a number of components for building Linux-based operating systems and ways forward for Linux, for Linux operating system development. So that was one of the inspirations for the parts uh, around system thesis update. Now, I did ask the question about GNOME OS. For those who don't know about GNOME OS and who have not heard about it, GNOME OS is GNOME's testing QA operating system built around free desktop SDK. Uses the same as flat pack runtimes. And it's packed with loads of features, not just only for developers and testers. Someone was asking today whether, whether it's going to be, you know, only for, whether it's only for developers or whether it's going to be rolled out for more people to use. So it assists developers and testers uh, on, the, on using GNOME OS uh, it has the latest in development GNOME desktop core applications, development stack, and is running the modern system D. We, on this project, our work was to help to improve the components that make up the GNOME OS to make sure that the nightly build are more stable and are reliable and adding new features to those. But, you know, there's always a but. This is where I hand over to Abdurrahim. Yeah, so the update system of uh, GNOME OS was based until uh, recently on OS3. If you were here last year, uh, Valentin presented the, uh, a plan of where we're going, so with the brave new world, new trusted boot world, and this has since been merged. And so what does OS3 give us? It gives us an immutable system and atomic updates, so we can have uh, things that if something doesn't work, you can go back to the, the old version and things like that. But th there is the, uh, this experimental support for system DCS update. One of the major uh, issues with OS3 is that it tries to, uh, to have a, to, it has its own way of doing things and you can't go with things like uh, UKIs, DM Verity, and things like that. It's perhaps possible to, to hack the, the, your way around, but as, as it stands, OS3 stands in our way of implementing the, the trusted boot and uh, things like that. So we have this second branch of GNOME OS, which supports system DCS update. Now we are having two branches 
in parallel. So if you download the latest installer, if you go to os.gnome.org and get the latest installer, it will offer you to install either one, the OS3 version or the sysupdate version. So why do we want we wanted to go to the to sysupdate? So the first thing is the trust chain from all the way from the bootloader. So we have the bootloader system, dboot, then shim, then all the, and, and we try to have all these measured boot and uh, secure boot things. We can have our encrypted file system. And this is one of the major things that uh, uh, let us move from OS3. Because if we want to have a, an installer that simply copies an image or onto your disk, you can't encrypt it, it uh, encrypt the root file system. So with uh, the new sysupdate variant, we have the USR partition, which is not encrypted, and the root partition can be created uh, using system daily part on the first boot, and this one is encrypted. We have closer integration with system D, so the, the quirks of OS3, we, have, we leave them behind, and we uh, and advanced support for image-based design DM Verity, things like that. So yeah, this is the GNOME OS Sys update uh, branch. So this is what I was talking about. We have a secure measured boot and full disk encryption for the, the root partition. We have a unified kernel image, which is signed. And uh, we create the root partition with systemd part on first boot. And it's a proper discoverable disk image, which can be used with the systemd n spawn or systemd vm spawn, something that, uh, that is also a, a new and new development uh, done by code thing. So what we want to do for this project, uh, we took uh, GNOME OS sysupdate from here, and we want to make it more usable. So one thing is that uh, sysupdate is not integrated with GNOME. So you have to run sysupdate, so systemd sysupdate manually as root, or have a timer that runs it for you. So that's, that's one uh, issue we had. So we, we uh, so Adrian developed a Dbus service, sysupdate T, and a command line interface, and we tried to get this implemented. That was the, the first part of our project. The second part was to implement a, a, a plugin for Grom software, so that you have a graphical way to update your system. This one is, well, I'll go through the, the details. The third one is optional features. So we have some sysx that we want to to, enable, to let users enable or disable Delta upgrades. Downloading a two gigabytes image for every update is not efficient. We want to be able to download just a Delta from what changed from the previous version, especially if we want to have a nightly update. That's inefficient. And then the ability to track multiple versions of the OS. So if you have two supported versions of the OS at the same time, you don't always need to, to, to update to the latest one. You may want to, to keep with the, the old stable one for a while. So this is, the first step is system DCs update T. So we have a, now a, a, a Dbus service. So as I said, uh, Adrian had a branch adding, adding this Dbus service. We managed to upstream it to systemd. We have now a systemd sysupdate D, a Dbus service that can be used from uh, user applications. And we have update CTL, which is a command line that talks to uh, sysupdate. So you don't have to go into the, so that can be run as an ordinary user, use polkit and things like that to uh, to authenticate the user. The next step is the, the GNOME software plugin. Uh, yeah, so this was developed in the 
in parallel with the trying to upstream the sysup dt. So we found some sharp edges. We iterated on both on the same time. And now that the sysup dt work landed, we are very close to landing the, the GNOME software plugin. So hopefully we'll have something good for the, the next uh, release of GNOME. Yeah, one of the, when we had uh, sharp edges around system update, which is optional features. One thing that we had with OS3 is the ability to have two branches in parallel, the user branch that contains what you expect a user system to have, and then a development branch which contains development tools, uh, development headers, so, so that you can compile your application, use your, your SDK stuff on, on your system. This isn't uh, possible with sysupdate. We can't switch from one branch to another, from one image to another, especially since they don't have the same size. The, the, the development image can be uh, a lot bigger. So what we have is uh, implement the development tools as a sysext. And we want users to be able to enable or disable these uh, sysexts. There, is, there are other things as well, such as the, the NVIDIA uh, drivers, the SnapD. So for the, those who maybe not universally uh, accepted, so uh, the, at first, it was implemented using components. Components are things in, uh, that can be independently updated in, uh, syst with systemd sys update. So you could just enable the updating the component. But then they can get out of sync with the, the main system. So if you have version, uh, I don't know, 1, Point one of the, the system, we want to have 1.1 of the, the development uh, extension. They can't get out of sync. The other thing that we tried is uh, shipping the configuration files, but manually enabling them by copying them into the, the sysupdate directory. And this proved to be a huge foot gun. It has a high chance of breaking a system. When I say breaking, I see breaking, but not breaking, because the system will still boot, but you won't be able to update it anymore. <coughs> so uh, it's not usable anymore, but it boots, and if you know enough of sysupdate, you, uh, you can fix it. So fixes that were implemented, and I must thank uh, Adrian, which is, uh, who is an, another contractor with the SDF. He isn't part of CodeThink, but we had, to, uh, we had some collaborations with, uh, with him on this project. We implemented the handling of incomplete versions. So if you have a, so now it no longer breaks your system if you do this. If you add configuration that is not, uh, if you add some extra configuration to the sys update, Manually, it will not, no longer break a system. We have some other features, like drop-in file support. So if you, if you want to change some configuration of sysupdate, for example, to, to download from a different uh, URL, for example, for a local development, you can do it now without rewriting the whole, uh, without without completing the whole configuration file and changing the, the thing, uh, just for just changing one line. And we have had a discussion with the systemd developers around uh, implementing option transfers, which I will come back to later. Oh, not later, just now. <laughs> so optional features. In addition to what, what I was talking about, about adding uh, sysup, uh, sysx or uh, UKI add-ons, we sometimes, like the NVIDIA driver, we have UKI add-on to enable uh, things in the kernel, and uh, sysx for the init RD, and the sysx for the main system, and we want to enable and, or disable all of these at the same time. We can do now 
with the, what was merged up until now in system D, we can do the manual uh, copying of configuration files without breaking our system, but it's better to have uh, a command that can, be do, uh, that can do this. And this is what we have, optional features, which was also implemented by AGN, and it's a pull request in... Uh, so everything I've talked about is already merged in system team main, and it will be available in version 257, but this one is not merged yet. So I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the people who need to, calling on the people who need to review this, who need to help us review it, such that we can get this merged in the next uh, system D258 release. Yeah, and then the, the other pain point is Delta upgrade. We don't want to download a whole image at, the same, uh, at once every update. So this is something that we ran out of funding for to finish. <coughs> but we have a proposal and uh, dis we had a discussion with the systemd developers. We have a proposal on how to implement this. And the idea is to have a uh, pluggable backend so that you could have the, the, the current uh, downloading everything, but we can add uh, support for CA sync or desync or whatever you want as a way to download uh, of downloading a, a delta of the image. Yeah, another thing is tracking multiple mass, uh, uh, major versions. So if you have like Fedora 39 and Fedora 40 is released, you, uh, there are some people who want to upgrade, some people who want to stay on Fedora 39 for a while. We want to be able to support something like this with sysupdate. This is not yet ready. Again, uh, AGN implemented this, and we are we're hoping to to have some well to have it merged. Perhaps not for 257, but for a future version of uh, systemd. And yeah, that's what I was talking. We have Delta updates and the Dbus API. Perhaps we want to have some improvements to the DBus API as we try to uh, to improve the the GNOME uh, the GNOME software plugin. There are some discussions with the GNOME software maintainers as to why, how we could Im uh, improve the API. So this is also something some future work that we could have we could do. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you to uh, Abdi Rahim and Jude. And are there questions from the audience? So you mentioned that uh, the, a big pain point with OS3 was lack of ability to encrypt the rootfs. Mm -hmm. What was the main blocker there? Sorry? What was the main issue to achieve that? The main issue is that we want to have a, a, an image that we just copy using DD or a graphical DD onto the, the system. So the, the root FS is already there with uh, OS3 and we copy it. We can't have it encrypted in the installer media, so it's just copied and encrypted. This, this is probably not something that answer uh, that we can't uh, so, that we can't overcome, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's an, it was an issue. So I assume you have the um, updates you get, and then you just check the signature before applying it? There's some signing, I guess? Or yeah, uh, so there is a, a, a SHA-256 uh, sum of the of the file that is in a SHA-256 sums, and the, this file is GPG signed. So you download the, the SHA-256 sum, check it that it matches the GPG signature, and then you download the file and check against it. Um, have you considered maybe doing something like macOS system integrity protection, where you um, don't allow most, most people in the system even root to write to a lot of locations in the system, except 
uh, if they have some magic capability. I guess it's, I, I don't think the Linux kernel can do this right now, but like, have you thought about like locking this further down? Who can write this stuff even? Yeah, I think this is more a question for system D developers that, <laughs> than <laughs> Ognomo OS, and I'll let Leonard. So uh, um, while sysupdate D does check the SHA-256 sum file, we actually mostly misuse, misuse it as a uh, as a manifest of available versions, right? Like because the, the standard Unix format for the SHA-256 files, they have the hash on the left side and the file names on the right, so we can use it as a directory listing that we have very nice tools to, to create and, and uh, verify. Um, the actual security is, of course, um, hooked into the fact that we use UKIs that are Sekibut sign and that do the measurement stuff and that the uh, disk is then encrypted to. Um, and the Verity um, stuff where the signature is available and which is pushed into the kernel so that the kernel, it's checked against the kernel key ring and things like that. So that's what the security is hooked about. It hooked into it. The, the SHA-256 files also check, but that's kind of like mostly just redundant in a way. Um, it allows us to, to, to catch uh, uh, mistakes uh, earlier. And the other thing is, you know, everything in this model is very, like the slash user or something is, is very protected, like, um, so that, that is inherently immutable. Um, this means, like, on the, on the, on the block layer, um, if you write something, it uh, won't help you because it, you can't reproduce uh, the, the right hash um, in, the, in the Merkle tree. And if you write something on the file system layer, that's just, just going to be considered EROFs, uh, like, e, like you get Euro uh, read-only file system back because, um, yeah, the block device is read-only hands and the file system only hands. So uh, that said, at Microsoft, um, where we have similar systems um, set up, um, uh, we have uh, security policies that also add an extra layer. And one of them is IPE, you might have heard, like recently added in the Linux kernel, um, that is about execution, so that you cannot even execute stuff that it come, does not come from a uh, assigned authenticated image. Um, and in, in two system I want to eat even, like with LSM BPF, like I want to add additional security prof, uh, um, protections that you also cannot access any file unless it is backed by uh, DM crypt or DM verity, um, or is a virtual file system. TempFS or something. I'm not quite sure how it worked. Uh, yeah, I, I unfortunately don't remember the exact details, but I think there was some stuff where they only write update files, which are then are uh, applied during early boot before, this, before users have malicious input or whatever. I think that would be like, of course, this is just security in depth, right? It's just another layer where we could assume the Linux kernel is just kind of bad, so uh, we call we consider it pwned right away. So um, sure, the, th the thing is mounted read only, but that doesn't really help you if if you assume a kernel exploit, right? Uh, of course, you can then, yeah. I mean, the DM Verity stuff and so on still stands. I just think it would, could still add additional benefit to not be able uh, to write. So the, the, the fact that it's immutable is enforced by the kernel and, and, and offline through, through uh, encryption, right? Like what else would you want to add that isn't already covered by these two things, by the kernel? Like, I mean, it's not encrypted. The like slash user is not encrypted, it's only DM variety protected because there's no confidential stuff, uh, open source operating system. But I'd really like to have a check before I write it to the disk, actually, because otherwise I, I write data that, okay, it will not boot, that's fine, but somehow the system is broken. Okay, one last question. No, then please another round of applause for Abdel Rahim and Jude.